with us today. There are some communication cards in the pew in front of you. I would love for you to fill it out, drop it in the offering bag when it comes by. We make a promise. We will not knock on your door. We will not call you on the phone. But through slow mail, we will send you information about our church, all right? Uh, it will tell you who our staff is, what time our services are, the various ministries that we have, the outreaches that we do, and hopefully answer most of your questions. And we would love to get that information to you. Those same cards are for our regular attenders. If you have prayer requests, a special request, you want to meet with one of the staff, uh, please. Fill that card out, drop it in the offering bag. Every Tuesday morning, our staff meets. We talk about what's on those cards. We pray for them, and uh, we would love to be able to do that with you. All right, so please take the opportunity to do that. If I may direct your attention to the screen, remember, during this season, we are getting acquainted with some of the elders in our church. So they are doing the opening welcome. Now, just as these high school, college kids might look like they're staring in headlights when they look at you, Every one of these elders gets very nervous when the camera turns on, all right? For some reason, they forget they're supposed to smile, but it's been entertaining, hasn't it? Let's see who entertains us today, all right? Good morning, everyone. I'm Steve Drake of the Elder Board. Thank you for joining us today. I'm glad you're here. New Hope Families Ministry has a couple of fun events this summer. The first is Water Night, and it's on July 3rd at 5.30, we have water slides, a giant slip and slide, food, snow cones, splash pool for the little ones, and even a snowball fight in July. So come along and join us on July 3rd. The second event is our annual Vacation Bible School. This will be July 15th through the 18th, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. The Mr. J Band is back, and this year their program is There's a Monster Under My Bed. This is all about Jesus being the light. This group connects with the elementary school kids really well. They do it through games, songs, Bible studies. There'll even be fun crafts and snacks for the kids. There's no cost for this event, and it's open to pre-K through sixth grade. So that's July 15th through the 18th. We'll also be looking for volunteers for this event. So look for the sign-up sheets that'll be going around soon. We need lots of volunteers to help our kids have the best time they can and learn a lot. Hey, New Hopians, the 4th of July is this week. So don't forget to buy your fireworks from the Student Ministries booth right outside. Check out Facebook to see the times that we're open all week. And thanks for your continued support. Hi, ladies. Come out and join us for an early morning walk. The Walking Club meets again on July 6th at 8 a.m. at the Dry Creek Trailhead at the corner of Sunnyside and Shepherd. We have a great time. Come out and join us and bring a friend. Hello, seniors. Come celebrate the 4th of July with us at the Seniors Luncheon on Tuesday, July 9th. We will enjoy a delicious catered lunch from Luna's. We will again be writing cards to honor and show our appreciation for our Clovis veterans. We will celebrate our country's independence and rejoice over our dependence on Christ. All of this for just $5. Signups are going around, so please let us know if you will be there. And if you've never attended a seniors luncheon before, please join us for this wonderful celebration. Our July men's breakfast is on July 13th. Coffee will be on at 7.30, we'll eat at eight, and this month we'll be having barbecue breakfast burritos. Hope to see you there. All right, I just had an idea. Fawn, I think you need to give our elders a lesson before they do their next announcements. Because, see, you, that's right, you smile, and you moved so slowly. Yeah, I've never seen you move that slow. Great job. So please take note of all those special things that, uh, that are coming up. Uh, I've got sign-up sheets that are going around right now. There are two things on each clipboard. The top one is volunteers for Monsters Under My Bed, Vacation Bible School. If you would like to assist, whether it's in the classroom, whether it's in crafts, whether it's in snacks, whether it's one day coming to set up or one day coming to clean up afterwards, uh, just put your name on here. They'll follow up with you and work out the details. And then uh, the bottom couple of pages is the senior luncheon, all right? Not coming up this week, but the following week. It's a veterans theme. You're going to be writing cards to, uh, to some of our soldiers that are overseas, and so uh, come and have a great day, all right? And I don't think you have to cook anything that day. Luna's, uh, just bring $5, and if you don't have $5, just show up, all right? We'd love to have you at our senior luncheon. So those are the two. 
I did send both clips. Yeah, all right, both sides. Very good. Uh, let's see here. Speaking of elders a moment ago who gave the introduction, that was Steve Drake. Uh, one of your other elders is smiling. I am confidently very big today, all right? Uh, John Reelhorn. He got married yesterday at about 445, all right, over at Avila Beach. And so uh, they are spending today in Avila and then taking off tomorrow on their honeymoon. Uh, very exciting time that we had with, uh, with John and Liz in preparation for that day as well as in, uh, you know, sometimes ministry, you just have to suffer for Jesus. And going to Avila Beach, all right, and uh, having to put up with that, uh, whew, it, was, it, was, it was tough, but somebody had to do it. Uh, Phil and Hazel, would you mind standing up? Somebody might help you. Tim, duck, get out of the way, Tim. All right. <laughs> Phil, are you standing yet? All right. This is a wonderful couple. They have been married forever. And they love each other deeply. Hazel, uh, Hazel had bypass surgery just about six weeks ago. And she is doing really, really well. Uh, but they are ready to hand off a volunteer job they've been doing around New Hope for years. We often don't think of the little things that get done or need to be done around here. And uh, what they have been doing is those pencils that are in the pew, all right, once a month, they replace those. So we try to keep them as sharp and usable as possible. So y'all can sit down now. I don't want to wear you out today, all right? And, uh, but they've done that for years around here. On senior luncheon day, they, uh, they bring the sharpened pencils. They come in here after lunch. They pull out all the old ones. Uh, if they're still good, they take them home and resharpen them for the next time. If they're broken and no good, they throw them away. And then uh, the next month, they do the same thing. So it takes them about a half an hour after a senior luncheon to come through here and uh, exchange that. And so if there's any of you that you would like that as a job, you want to volunteer to do that once a month, we provide you the pencils. We even provide the pencil sharpener for you, all right? You get to take it home with you, all right? And uh, it's just a, it's a great way of taking care of one of the little chores around here that is very, very... Don't you hate to pull one of those pencils out and then it's broken? <laughs> all right. Did you find one of those today? Let me know. Well, Shelly will take care of that right away. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hazel will show us how, all right? So anyway, thank you, Wrights. Thank you for always being right, all right? and helping us out there. We appreciate that. All right, let me highlight just a, a few prayer requests. Um, this past week, we did services for the Rungi family, and uh, please continue, remember, uh, to pray for them. He was a doctor at Kaiser, had retired just a little over uh, two years ago. Uh, his youngest daughter grew up in our youth group here. She now uh, works in San Diego. But if you would remember them, continue to pray for Steve Smith, all right, and, and uh, the challenges that he faces and all the firsts, all right. So uh, just continue to remember them in prayer. Uh, we've had a lot of folks who've been in and out of the hospital this week. We have them in our, our prayer request uh, line in the bulletin. So take the opportunity to read that and please uh, remember to pray for each other. So those are our updates that we're going to hit today. Uh, this is a special time. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward and wait on us as we have our tithes and offering. And then I'm going to introduce to you our baptism candidates today and we will proceed with our baptism. So gentlemen, if you'll come and wait on us, would you join with me as we pray? Our Father in heaven, we love you so much. We're grateful for the life that you share with us. And Lord, in the adventure of a week, we can have our ups and our downs. Just as this past week, Lord, we shared with a family uh, uh, in the loss of their dad and their husband, and two days later, we share in the joy of marriage. And Father, life is an awful lot like that week, is there are high points and there are low points. And what a relationship with you does for us is, uh, Father, it, it mellows out our life. It helps us not go so low when the low moments come. And, Father, it keeps, us, it keeps us stable when the high moments hit us. We don't live on an emotional roller coaster from one high to the next low. But, Father, we live in a, as we talked a little bit last week in the, in the Sunday sermon, we're learning. We're learning what Paul wrote in Philippians. We're learning in this adventure called life, in the midst of the ups and downs. We are learning as we grow in a relationship with you how to experience contentment. Contentment in the highs, contentment in the lows, contentment in the middle of life. 
to learn to be satisfied with who you are in us, no matter what this world may be doing to us. It doesn't come naturally to us. It's the reason Paul said he had been learning that over the years of his life. He had known what it was to have nothing. And he's known what it was like to have abundance. And he discovered that he was dissatisfied with both until he entered a relationship with you and learned what that was all about. So I pray, Father, that as we, uh, as we preach and we teach and we worship here, that together we are learning what it means to grow in contentment, to experience that peace that passes understanding, to know that joy that is unspeakable, and, Father, to not let the lows take us into depression and not allow the highs to cause us to do something stupid. But, Father, just to walk that daily walk with you and the consistency of, of contentment that there is a forever God who's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. So, Father, we commit all the needs that are on our hearts today, those who are in the hospital, those who are recovering from surgery, those who've had treatment this week, those who are home. We just trust you with each of their needs. Lord, for those who've experienced the shadow of the trouble of sorrow in their life, May they experience, Father, your presence and to know that sorrow doesn't have the last word, but joy does. We can't do that out of human effort or ingenuity or programs, but, Father, that's been made possible by a relationship with the person whose name is Jesus Christ. Today, Father, thank you for the great excitement that we have to share with 16 who have made important decisions personally about a, a relationship with Jesus Christ, not only to know him as Savior, but to know him as their source of life every moment of every day. What a privilege, Father, it is to share with them in this today. We lift you up and we honor you as we give to you our gifts today, not because you need them, but because, Father, you will use them in a greater capacity than we ever could out of our own ingenuity. And thank you, Father, that in doing so, we express our faith in you that you can do more in our lives when we have less than when we want to hoard it all. And so thank you for those privileges of showing our trust, our dependence and your grace in our lives. For this we humbly pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I know some of you are guests. Your, uh, your, your friends or family of folks who are being baptized today, thank you so very, very much for being here and sharing in this moment with someone that you care so much about. And uh, let me just give a brief explanation of what baptism means. There may be some who are joining us and you didn't know we were doing baptism today and you were wondering, what's going on? What does this mean? And all of our kids are coming in because some of their classmates in Sunday school are being baptized today and they want to be here to witness that as well. And um, uh, what we're doing today does not make anybody a Christian. Everybody who is sharing in baptism today is already a Christian. You see, the Bible says, for by grace are we saved. And what does it mean to be saved? It means to have a personal relationship with God himself through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that if we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth that Jesus is who he said he was and did what he said he would do, he lived, he was crucified, he was buried, and he was raised again from the dead. He said if we believe that and put our trust in him, we will be saved. It doesn't happen because we're born in America. It doesn't happen because we attend a church. It doesn't happen if, just because we're baptized. You can be baptized and it can mean absolutely nothing to you. But if by grace, through faith, we put our trust in Jesus Christ. Our sins are now forgiven. Heaven is our forever home. And sometimes what we think is that that's the greatest part of the deal. No, that's the bonus Okay, that's the, that's the benefit at the end. The greatest part of the deal in a relationship with Christ is he comes to live in us right now. So for the remainder of this life that we live on earth, we have all that Jesus is for everything that we need. That is why we can have peace and joy and contentment in a very troubled world and at troubled moments in our own life. And so well, they say, okay, what are we doing this for? I mean, dunking people underwater, that seems a little weird. I don't deny that. Don't deny that. But it won't be the weirdest thing I've ever done in my life, and it's not going to be the weirdest thing you've ever seen or done in your life. Trust me. I could tell a few stories on some of y'all that are really weirder than that. 
But what there is is there's meaning. You see, the meaning of a person being baptized, being laid back in the water, being raised up, it's an outward picture of what's happened already on the inside of us. You see, the Bible says when we were born physically, our natural birth, when our mothers ushered us through a big push into this world, we entered this world sinful. What's one of the first words your babies learn? No. Okay? That's sin nature. I want what I want, and I want it right now. And so being laid back is we were born dead in our trespasses and sins. It's a picture of we were the walking dead. When we enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, that's being pictured by being brought out of the water. What the Scripture says, we are now raised in the newness of life. We are now fully alive, both physically and spiritually. It's also a picture of our faith in the resurrection, that Jesus was buried, and just as he was raised on the third day, so we have now been raised to the newness of life. And so this is a picture. Well, why do we do this picture again and again and again and again? Number one, it's the first step of obedience, really, in the life of a Christian. When John the Baptist would preach and folks would repent and be saved, he would baptize. And it was a public declaration of this very personal and sometimes very private decision that we make. And so today, we get to share, as members of God's family and friends of these folks, we get to share in kind of a a new birth celebration For some of them, that new birth took place quite some time ago, but they've never had the opportunity to be baptized, and today they're doing it. For some, it's been very, very recent. But for each of them, they've all been asked the questions, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you know what it means to be forgiven? Do you know what it is to know that heaven's your home, and that between now and then, our heart is the home of Christ on this journey through life? And so, uh, let me introduce those candidates to you. Would you stand when I call your name? In this service, there will be 10 of them. Evelyn Gizzo, did I say that last name right? All right, just face the audience. I know they're scary, but just face them. Remain standing, if you would, Evelyn. Juliet Benson, Juliet Benson, all right, all right. Dan Sullivan. Kelsey Sullivan. Sadie Sullivan. Lisa Tatro. Morgan Tatro. Dominique Tatro. Hannah Tatro, and James Atterbury, all right? So these are the 10. Please remain standing for just a moment. So we're going to do this today publicly as well, all right? You heard me give that explanation of what baptism means. So for every single one of you, all right, have you invited Jesus Christ in your life and you know him as your personal Savior? If you can say yes, say yes. Was that unanimous? All right, I think I heard everybody, all right? Some of you see a couple of young ones, or maybe they're just short, all right? And you're saying, what's that going on? Trust me, those parents I know have talked with their daughter, and that family has talked with their daughter. And uh, I was five when I invited Christ in my life. I remember it as if it was yesterday, instead of only 40 years ago. Uh My folks did not let me be baptized till I was eight years old because they wanted to make sure I understood what it meant. There is not an age limit on this. It's a a point of coming to an understanding, and this family has been assured of that. So uh, if you all would like to make your way out those side doors and any last-minute preparations, Linda will follow you or lead you out. And any last-minute preparations, Mark and I will meet you all uh, in the baptistry in a few moments. I will tell you that uh, the evil one did his best for this not to happen today. Uh, I got a call from Mark who was going to turn the baptistry on. We we installed new equipment about uh, 18 months ago, and that new equipment was an automatic fill, automatic shutoff, and automatic water warmer. None of that worked today. We did this the old-fashioned way. We filled it with a hose. I told everybody it's not as warm as their pool, but it's not as cold as the river, all right? 
we're somewhere in between, all right? But, uh, but we got it filled, and so uh, nothing's going to stop this baptism today. Uh, the worship team's going to come back and lead us until we get our preparations, and we are in the water. We'll see you back in a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, if any of you want to come up and take pictures when a friend or family member is being baptized, we have two chairs right up in front you can run to. All right? Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, we now have two hoses in here, so we're making good progress. <laughs> it's actually like a jacuzzi now, which is nice. It's not, not quite as warm as one, but it's good. Anyway, so this morning we're going to start with Evelyn Gizzo. So we'll get her down here. No, it's not bad at all. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So this is Evelyn. So Evelyn has already said that she has accepted Jesus Christ as her personal savior. So when was that? When I was 15. When you were 15? What took you so long? Is that the right right opportunity? Right, all right. right. Amen. This is the right opportunity. I'm glad that we get to share in it with you. So um, Evelyn became a member recently and uh, moved up from Southern California. So uh, we're just happy to have her here at New Hope. So we will get on with this. So put your hand on that. Okay. So because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is my great pleasure as your brother in Christ to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, Evelyn, where are you from? I was born and raised in Fresno, but I've lived in Southern California so, for a long, long time. All right, terrific. Well, welcome back to the Central Valley, Thank Clovis, you. and Thank you particularly New Hope. Yes. God bless you, Evelyn. <laughs> Juliet Benson. Juliet, come on down. Hi, Juliet. Hi, Tim. Oh, it's so good to have you here. <laughs> Juliet, folks are probably going to notice you have just a tinge of an accent. I do. Yeah, I do. where does that accent come from? From England. From England. Yeah. Wow. All right. For the Brits out there, all right? We've got a half a dozen of them here, all right? This has become the home away from home, all right, for the British, and we love that, all right? Uh, Juliet, you are good friends of good friends of mine, all right? Uh, that's kind of how we got acquainted, all right? And uh, you've become part of our small group, and uh, we've had a wonderful time uh, around our dinner table, all right, and answering questions and listening to you as you invited Christ in your life and gave him your heart and life. And your husband and your daughter are here. They're right here on the front row. They're getting all this as we talk about you, all right? Uh, don't mess with this girl. Her husband's a detective, all right? All right, he's really, really good at his job, all right? Plus now she has God in her life, all right? And so she's not a woman to tangle with, all right? Juliet, you know Jesus Christ personally? I do. He lives in your heart? He does. And you're ready to be baptized? I am. All right, terrific. Step forward right there. Take your hand just like that. Juliet, because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you and I are now brothers and sisters in God's family, and so it is my joy and delight to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, now we have a family who is going to be joining me down here, all right? And so uh, I am going to ask the Solomon family to join me. Dan, this is Dad. He's going to lead the way. There are slip. All right, careful. Because if you fall, you'll land on me, and you're bigger than I am. All right, and this is all right, Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Sadie? It's not that. Stay right there, Sadie, so we can see you. It's All right? Cold. Stay right there for just a moment. All right, this is Dad and his beautiful two daughters, and thank goodness they look like their mother. All right? And, and, and Honey is sitting right out there, and this is uh, every baptism is special. Uh, some of them have a little more uh, significance. 
Uh, I better stand like this. She's shaking, all right? <laughs> uh, but I had the privilege of marrying Dan and Honey 13 years ago, almost? 2006. 2006. So uh, that was up in Tahoe, and that was a great day that we got to enjoy. That door over there, when it got put in, if you've read the label over there, it says Dan's Door. He, uh, he is also in law enforcement uh, with the Clovis Police Department, one of their uh, high-ranking officers there. And uh, it's good to have my back right over there, all right? Every, uh, every Sunday morning, I know I'm safe and secure. But um, all three of them wanted to be baptized today. Uh, these girls have shared their faith in Jesus Christ, and Dad has as well. And so here's what we're going to do. We're gonna, I'm going to baptize Dad first, all right? Doesn't usually work that way. But the reason I'm doing that is because then Dad is going to assist me baptizing his two daughters, okay? All right, so let's get Dad out of the way. So why don't you step up one more, and maybe, why don't you sit right here? Maybe you'll warm up a little bit. All right, Dan, you're a big boy. All right. All right. We've done bigger, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got a whole tub of water, all right? Yeah, we can probably turn it off. Okay. Where's Andre? You want to help out? Andre? <laughs> okay. Your hands just like this, you old Dan. Dan, because of your love for Jesus Christ. <laughs> I wonder if John the Baptist had these issues, all right? Dan, because of your faith in Jesus Christ and you know, that profession of faith in him, it is my privilege to baptize you not only as my friend, but we are now brothers in God's family in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. No, it's not cold. No, it's not cold. <laughs> Miss Kelsey, how old are you? Ten. Ten. And where do you go to school? Garfield. Garfield. And do you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? Yes. And you understand what baptism means? Then your dad and I are going to share in this together, okay? So do your hands just like I told you. Come stand right about here. Yeah, well, we don't want to, want to bank. No, no, you stay right there. You stay right there. You're going to one side and I'll do the other. All right? Kelsey, because you have invited Jesus Christ to be your Savior and Lord, it is my privilege on this day that I baptized your father to also baptize you. As he is my brother in Christ, you are now my sister in Christ. So I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on, baby girl. Are you still here? Okay, all right. Yeah, 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 yes? All right, all right. All right, step right up there. Sadie, where do you go to school? Same place as your sister? All right, and do you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? And you understand what baptism means? Then let's do this, all right? Take your hand just like this. Sadie, because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, it is a joy to share this day with you, your dad, and your sister. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woo! All right. All right, guys. Thank you for your I love you, baby. Oh, God. We have another family, and we're going to do them in pairs, all right? So, uh, is it Lisa and Dominic? Morgan. Lisa and Morgan, all right? Come on in, guys. Mom and daughter. Come your hands. There we go. All right. I think this is Morgan. Okay. <laughs> How does it feel? Cold. Cold? All right. Morgan, stay right up on that step. Lisa, come on down. All right. I love your shirt today. It says, Blessed Mama. And yes, you are. All right. This is, uh, this is mom and daughter. Uh, so how did I meet you? You married Jace and I in 2006. In two th two 2006. This is the year, all right? So uh, that was also with, with y'all, all right? So that 2006 was a good year. It was. Uh, I met the Tatro family long before that. 
Uh, we had done another wedding and we had done another funeral in the family. And so it's been a pleasure to have you all back and here and worshiping with us on a regular basis. And, and so we're going to baptize you first, all right? And then I'm going to have you help me with your daughter, all right? Will that work? Yes. Good. Why don't you step right up here? You've invited Christ in your life? Yes. You know him as your personal Savior? You understand baptism. Great. Father, it's a privilege and a joy to share in this moment with mother and daughter. We love you so much. We thank you for your sacrifice for us. It is now our joy and our privilege to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. Kind of a figure rating, isn't it? Yeah. All right, Morgan. How old are you, Morgan? Eight. And where do you go to school? Sierra View. All right. And you've invited Christ in your life? You know what baptism means. Great. Then Morgan, let's baptize you today, okay? Perfect. And Mom's going to help us. Our Father in Heaven, thank you for the joy of sharing this moment with Morgan. Thank you that she gets to share it with her mother. And we're so delighted that you live in her heart. We now baptize her as a sister in your family in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When uh, Lisa popped up out of the water, she said, refreshing. <laughs> and now we have a brother and a sister, Dominique and Hannah. Come on, Dominique and Hannah. Be careful, we don't want you to slip. All right. In case you didn't know, this is Dominique. He's the brother. This is Hannah. She's a much better looking sister. All right. So how old are you guys? I'm 17. 16, 17. So he's your baby brother. All right, do you boss him around? No. <laughs> yeah, exactly what my sister always said, yeah. Uh, anyway, both of you have invited Christ in your life. You know him as your personal savior. You understand what baptism means, all right? Then ladies first, okay? All right. Catch me. <laughs> you think he's going to have your back? All right, I won't let you go. All right. Because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, it is my joy, honor, and privilege to now baptize you as my sister in faith. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Where do you go to school? Madera. Madera. All right. Terrific. Great. Take your hands just like this. Because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, it is now my joy to baptize you on the very same day that we baptize your sister. I do so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we have one last one for this service, James Atterbury. Water is cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Attaboy, James Atterbury. <laughs> there you go. As if that's original, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, James, it's been a privilege to get acquainted with you over this past year. See you in our church and worship. You've invited the Lord Jesus into your life? Yes, I have. When did you make that decision? Years ago. Years ago. All right. But I'll have to say I did it recently because of thinking my father when he passed away. And he reached up as he was wheeled into surgery and said, it will be okay. Mm. So I didn't know if my father was saved or not. I feel he told me then it would be okay. So I was baptized Presbyterian when I was a little one. And oh, now so I want to... <laughs> <laughs> Now, since we, we did meet last, then there's enough water left. <laughs> there is, there is. I, a, a good Presbyterian taught me how to sprinkle one time, all right? There you I, go. I, I, had to do, I had to do it once, all right? And he showed me the rhythm, all right? So, so. I'm grateful for that. Well, um, I have to say that the way that you present the word and the way that the music is done here, as you all well know, makes the spirit in all of us. Uh, well, it's so kind, so kind. What I'm most excited about is that um, when we face death, the only thing that 
enables us to say it'll be okay is when we have that peace of Christ in our hearts. A thief on a cross discovered it minutes before he died. That's how much God loves us. He pursues us to our very last breath. He would love to have us through most of our life, but he loves us so much he pursues us to our very last breath. And I'm grateful that we get to share in this moment with you today. James, you step right. up closer to that step. Very good. All right. Okay. Perfect. James, because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, because of your willingness to identify in obedience with Christ through baptism, it is now my joy, honor, and privilege to baptize you as my brother in faith. I do so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Bill Eccles, and uh, I would like to just say real quickly on behalf of my wife, Lindsay, and myself for allow thanking you as a congregation for allowing us to be the college Bible study leaders. Uh, it's been such a blessing, and uh, two of the blessings are going to come down and join me in the water today. So this is Jenna Claiborne. And this... And this is her mother, Denise Claiborne. <laughs> so uh, this is new for me, okay? I've never <laughs> been, got the opportunity to baptize a mother and daughter, and uh, this is such a blessing. If you are here today and you, uh, support a family and friends, uh, would you please stand for uh, these two, please? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So first off, uh, Denise. Denise has been such an integral part of our college Bible study. Uh, no, she's not in the study, but her and her husband, Jeff, uh, uh, who just stood up, um, they provide so much for us. Encouragement, support, but also just amazing desserts. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kids are all spoiled to death, uh, along with me and Lindsay. So uh, we thank you so we much for that. You. Not only that, yeah. but you've become just a wonderful uh, sister to me. And I want to thank you for this opportunity. It's thank such you. an honor. Do you remember when you first gave your, your life to Jesus? I was 12. 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Wow. And do you remember where you were at? Um, it was at a, a home in front of E.V. Free Church. Mm, it wonderful. was a, a home that was still in front of the old, old uh, chapel. Wonderful. wonderful. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Tim covered all my best material today, so we're just going to go <laughs> ahead and, uh, and go ahead and have you baptized. Thank so you. You. follow me. Okay. Uh, put your hand out here. Okay. And uh, this is such an honor for me. I just want to say thank you so much. You. And so remember to bend your knees. Uh -huh. And in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh, did you want to okay. hit the cross? Yeah, that was my head. Okay, got yeah. it. All right. <laughs> I mean, so, we want you crucified at the cross. <laughs> <laughs> Suffering for the cross. Okay, so uh, Jenna, um, yeah. what a wonderful honor this is. Jenna is one of our most faithful uh, attendees and uh, for like three years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just been such a blessing to get to know you even better than before. So mm -hmm. do you remember when you first accepted Jesus as your Savior? Gosh, um, probably when I was very little. I've been going to the church since kindergarten. Yeah, so wonderful. Yeah, you have. <laughs> yeah. yeah, But absolutely. I, I redecorated my life back when I was 16 on my birthday. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wonderful. What mm -hmm. a great day. What a great day. Yeah. Well, good. Well, you know what this means. And so mm -hmm. uh, thank you for allowing me to, to do this honor. We'll uh, have you right here. Put hand over your face. And uh, make sure you get right. Right? And now I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Elder Bill. You All right, job well done. Job well done. If I would have known that he had studied, I wouldn't have used his material today. But, uh, anyway. <laughs> All right, Dunkles, come on down if you would, please. We've got a husband and a wife coming down with us here, Ed and Connie. All right? And, of course, it's obvious this is Connie. All right? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> 
Was it something I said? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I need mean, my hot flash. Right <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna let you get on the far side over there. All right, that'll be perfect. All right. Um, I actually got acquainted with uh, Ed and Connie as a result of Ed's son, all right? Uh, but we've had the opportunity to get better acquainted over the last couple of years, and it's wonderful having you in our church. Um, I, I know guys who are in the, um, the field that you had been in, planning and architecture work and design. You always have plans and ideas in your mind. And I love to see when detail people like you finally allow <laughs> God's detail to take root in your lives. It is. It, it was time. Yeah, <laughs> and we are so glad. And it, it's a joy to have you here. Both of you have invited Christ in your life, correct? Yes. All right. Yes. And you know him uh, intimately and personally. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Then, Connie, if you'd turn and face that crowd right over there. And if you just step back. Yeah, yeah, that crowd right there. All right. And get the front row seats right okay. here. All right. Perfect. Connie, because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you and I are now brothers and sisters in God's family. So it's my joy and delight to baptize you as my sister in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woo! Amen. Amen. I'm going to have you two trade places. All right. Step up a little closer, Ed. I don't want to bump your head on the back step. All right? Ed, because of your faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, it is a joy and a privilege for me to share with you as my brother in Christ in this baptism. Thank you. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here we go. mother and daughter coming in to join us. All right, Catherine and Cheyenne. This is not a very wide hallway back here, so it's single file in and out. All right, we're doing good. Hello, Cheyenne. Hello. How are you? Oh, yeah. Watch your step. A little, little cool now. All right, all right. Get right over there. All right, come on in, Catherine. You have no idea how encouraging it is to me to know that I can still take the breath away from a woman. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, I, I got acquainted uh, with Catherine as a result of one of my relatives. All right. He's sitting out there, John Adams, and uh, they're partners in a law firm. And uh, Catherine and my wife started uh, visiting together and talking about some things they had in common. And uh, then Catherine started coming to church, and we just can't get her to stop now. And we're very excited about that. And she also has brought along members of her family. Uh, they take up most of the pew. They kind of have my back right over there usually. And so it's been fun to watch you all grow and your love for Christ and your faithfulness here at New Hope. And so the question we've asked everybody else is you personally have a relationship with Jesus Christ, yes. right? By faith, you invited him to come live within your life. And you understand that's the reason we're doing this baptism today. It won't make you any more of a Christian than you already are. But this is an exciting moment that affirms our faith and it encourages the faith of others as they get to watch in this very special moment. All right? So, Cheyenne, here's the deal. I'm going to baptize your mother first. All right? And then she's going to go right back to that position. And I'm going to let her assist me in baptizing you. All right? All right. Does that sound okay? All right. Catherine, come on over here. Right up close to that step. Catherine. Because you have invited Jesus Christ to be your Savior and Lord, it is my joy and privilege to know that we are part of the same family. You are my sister in Christ, and I get to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. I'm going to angle you just a little bit, okay? And you're going to get right there. We don't want to... There we go. We got room right there. All right. Uh, Cheyenne, so uh, you're, out of, you're out of school. What are you doing these days? Um, 
working on getting another job. Get, okay, all right. I like the idea of when you finish school that you're working, all right? That's a wonderful concept. So it is a joy and a privilege to know that you've invited Christ in your life, that uh, you're not only mother and daughter, all right, but you're also sisters in God's family. And you're now part of the same family that I belong to. And it's not because any of the three of us in here deserved it, but it's because Christ loved us. And so because of your profession of faith in him, it is now my privilege to baptize you into God's family as my sister in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> not bad, huh? And last but not least, Mr. Logan Prentice is going to come in and share in the baptisms. Carefully and slowly, all right? Because it's cool. If you fall on me, <laughs> if you fall on me, I'm in trouble. All right, all right. I'm gonna try not to. All right. Uh, Logan, are you really a Chicago fan? Uh, unfortunately for you, yeah. <laughs> I, don't I'll, I'll, I, I don't think I can baptize you today. I'll get out, I'll get out. In spite of our weaknesses and our failures, God loves us with amazing love. And he doesn't hold it against us at all, all right? He, oh, for a baseball team, folks. <laughs> But, uh, Logan, you've invited Christ in your life. I have. Like you said, Tim, you know, you got to stop running from your faith. you gotta, you got to allow Christ in. All right, so. and you've done that. And I have. All yes, right, have. amen. Now let's do this. All right, get right yes. up here the step. Please, flex your knees, all right? Sure. Yeah. I'm going to need all the help I can get here. I'm, I'm, I'm still here, all right? <laughs> Logan, because you have professed Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, it is my privilege to baptize you as my brother in faith. I do so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I think he was heavier than Dan. All right. <laughs> All right. That concludes our baptisms for this service. Thank you so much for joining us today. Here's the good news. You don't have to hear me preach today. To... Uh, that doesn't mean the service is over yet, all right? That doesn't mean the service is over yet. We have a young man who grew up in our high school group, and uh, he believed at the end of his senior year that God was calling him into ministry to preach the gospel. And so uh, after his first year out of high school, uh, we were able to help make arrangements by his desire and his will for him to go to uh, Ravencrest. And somebody, Tim, would you put the podium back over there? And we probably need to, do you have a mic on? Yeah. Okay, very good. And so uh, I want to introduce to you Rick Cardoza, if you don't know him already. Rick has uh, preached on a Sunday night in our church before he went, yeah, our kids are going to leave. They're not, not because of you, Rick. Uh, and so Rick spent a year at Ravencrest Chalet. It is a Bible training facility that uh, I have a lot of close connections with. And that's all right. I have a face for radio. And, um, and, and so... Um, Rick is now home, and for this next year, he is an intern, at least for this next year. We hope much longer, but he's currently an intern learning ministry from the ground up in every possible way. He's right now working in our youth program. He's going to begin to share in some hospital visitation and hospice work and just learning what ministry is from uh, every possible aspect. And so today, he's here to say a brief thank you for uh, the assistance New Hope provided and also just to share a, a, a biblical devotion for us today, something that he learned at Ravencrest. So, Rick, we're all yours. All right. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Pastor Tim said, my name is Rick. Um, I've been coming here since 2014 or 15 uh, in the high school. Uh, I was saved at this church, and um, yeah, at some point, I, I really felt a passion to, to preach and to teach, and so um, by the Lord's grace, he's, he's brought me this far. Um, yeah, so I was a student at Ravencrest Chalet. It's a, tor it's a part of Torchbearers International, which is a, um, it's, it's a gap year program for whether you're, whether you're a year out of high school or whether you're uh, a couple years out of high school. Um, whether you want to be a mechanic or, or the, the pastor of a church, whatever you want to do, whether it's military or, or food industry, whatever it is, 
Um, the, the, the school equips you and, and brings you into a deep relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can live a life that is faithful and honoring to God no matter what circumstance you're in. And my, my friend Micah summed up this uh, year pretty well. He said he came praying just for, for one godly man that he could, that he could walk in fellowship with uh, during his time there, and God, by his grace, gave us an entire student body full of men and women that we could walk uh, closely with uh, in the Lord and, and just share uh, hurts and, and the good times. There were sad times, happy times, um, and it was so good because no matter whether there, there was, because there were times of anger and frustration and times of sadness and, and frustration, but what the overall theme in all of those was a sense of joy in each circumstance. And so I, I'm just so thankful for, for this year. Um, I got to try snowboarding for the first time. Um, yeah, snowboarding and like three feet of powder, you fall a lot. And uh, so I was like, well, there's so much powder. Maybe I should go to like a resort where it's like a little bit less and nice and you know, kind of smooth. And I paid 70 bucks to fall for an entire day. So, <laughs> so that was cool. I'm pretty sure, yeah. It, it hurts to this day. But um, that was awesome. Got to try rock climbing. I climbed Long's Peak, which is a 14,000-foot uh, uh, peak around there, uh, the tallest peak there. We, we started at 3.30 in the morning on the trail, and we got, we got off the trail at 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, so fantastic height. And I, I've met so many. I had, I had met so many dear friends while I was there, um, so many people that I just got to share with uh, and be vulnerable with and just show that, yeah, this, I'm, I'm not perfect and I, I struggle with these things, but I have one, de- one desire and it's to love and it's to honor the Lord. And they walked with me through all of it. And so I'm so thankful for the student body. Um, and I'm thankful for you, to you guys. Um, this was nowhere on my radar, but uh, by God's grace and, and your faithfulness to the church of, of just giving day in and day out every Sunday, um, and just investing time, it, it made it possible that I could go. And it, I can't imagine what my life would be like now if I hadn't gone. I, I've grown so much since uh, I was there. When I, when I first got there, I, I had a heart for, for preaching and for teaching, but I didn't really have a heart for shepherding, for caring for others. And during my time there, God gave me two of my closest friends there were, who were pretty completely opposite of me. Um, they, they were the closest to me, not because... They did anything for me or gave me anything, but because these are two people that I loved so dearly and I, I did my best to serve as best I could. And I'm sure many of you know that when there's someone that you love and care for and you serve them and when you see them filled with joy or you see them growing in life, that it fills your heart with joy. And so this year, God really taught me a lot about myself and um, just how prideful and arrogant I can be, but all through that, he's been growing me in, in the, into the Lord. Uh, so again, thank you so much for for your time and for your faithfulness to this church. So um, if you wouldn't mind turning with me to Matthew chapter 6, we're going to be, uh, I don't have that much time, so I'm just going to do uh, the first half of the Lord's Prayer. We're going to look at that. Because um, during my time at Ravencrest, the, the discipline I grew most in was prayer. Um, I, when I got to school, I didn't fully understand what it was, like what, what was its purpose, um, how is it that it worked with God and me talking to him by his spirit in communion. I had no idea what that meant. And uh, I often heard, uh, if I had something going on, pray about it or seek uh, in prayer. And I often had no idea what that meant or what that would even look like. Um, is it like, you know, with Elijah in, in the Old Testament or of seeing a bunch of fire and then a, a bunch of storms and earthquake and then a gentle whisper? Am I supposed to be looking for that gentle whisper? I had no idea. Um, but thankfully... Uh, by, by the Lord's province, he brought me to the Lord's prayer. And, and I'm so thankful for that because often now we, we, we aren't, in, at this point in church history, we aren't guided to, to, to learn about prayer from Scripture, to learn how to pray from uh, Scripture. Uh, we're, we've forgotten the meaning of prayer. And I think that's seen because oftentimes we see prayer as being very man-centered and, and more of God waiting on us for our beck and call um, but thankfully, by the Lord's prayer, I've been, I've been growing, and, and the Lord's been so gracious to me to teach me what, what it's like to pray. Um, and so today, we're going to see how the Lord's prayer is a simple prayer that calls man to forsake the world and center his heart around the glory of God. Uh, so let's pray before we get into it. 
Uh, Father, I thank you so much for your mercy, uh, for, for saving all of us in our sins while we were dead and, and enemies to you. Lord, that you saw us and you wanted us a part of your family. Jesus, I thank you for your cross and your resurrection that give us new life. And Lord, I pray that during this time, Lord, I pray that we would leave the world behind and we would press on to know you. Lord, I pray that your spirit would work in our hearts to, to open our eyes to see Jesus in all your beauty and to open our hearts to receive and rejoice in the word. Oh God, I pray that anything that I say today that is not of you, that is of the flesh, Lord, would it be forgotten? And oh God, would you be magnified in our lives and cherished? I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so the first clause, our Father who art in heaven. First thing we must recognize as we start to pray is our relationship to God. The very first line causes us to glory, to rejoice in the gospel because we were not always children of God. Ephesians 2 tells us of what our condition was. And you were dead in your trespasses and in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Because of Jesus Christ's death, our sins are paid for, and because of his resurrection, by faith, we are raised to newness of life. And now in Christ, we have become the very righteousness of God. Romans chapter 5, verse 19 says, For as through one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, even so through obedience of the one the many will be made righteous. We have been brought from the kingdom of darkness to God's kingdom as treasured sons and daughters of God. Immediately, we see we are not praying to some distant being. He didn't wind up the, he didn't wind up the world, all of history, like a clock and just let it happen like agnostics or like deists would suppose. He is not some cosmic force that is unconcerned with the earth or with, with its history. It's, it's going somewhere. He is our father, and we are his children. We see from passages like Job 41, Matthew 10, 29, and 30, and Romans 8, 28, that God has been and always will be intimately involved with the life of his creation, and especially his children, for whom he works all things together for their good. But we, we've got to be careful when we say all things for our good. The good which God works for those who love him may not be what we think it is. Too often we think God being for us is us living our best life now or us living a comfortable life or getting the things that we want. But the next clause is not asking God to make much of us. The next clause is asking God to make much of God. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed isn't really a word that's thrown around most days. And so I had, didn't really have any idea what that meant. So when I looked it up, uh, it means to be honored or, or revered, to be made much of. And when we come to God, our top priority on our list is for God to be honored and for God to be revered and for his name to shine in our lives. And this does not mean that our desires must take the back seat. God's honoring in our lives and our desires, our deepest joy, can be met in God's being honored. We see this in everyday life. Often our most precious moments in life are not in moments of self-satisfaction, but in times of self-forgetfulness. When we enjoy a great meal, when we go stargazing, when we go see a sunrise, we go to enjoy something, marvel at something that is much, much greater than ourselves. All these things show us that we were meant to delight in something far greater than ourselves. And what better to delight in than in the source of all created things? In Psalm 16, the psalmist King David says that in God's presence, there is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Delighting in God is not just a little pick-me-up when we feel down, but it's what we were created for. Look at it this way. If, if God, being the source from which all goodness and joy flows, points us to anything else to fulfill our heart's wants and needs, it would be idolatry. If we want to have a chance to experience our deepest delight, it must be in God. We cannot chase cars, we can't chase money, we can't chase comfortability. We weren't meant to. We were meant to enjoy God himself. And we see this because in John 17, verse 3, when Jesus is talking about eternal life, he says this is eternal life. Not that we have nice-looking clothes or, or cars or a good house. 
It's not that we have any of those things. He says eternal life is to know God the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ himself. Amen. And our greatest example of God's honor and our delight being one is found nowhere else but the cross. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, it says, In love he, God the Father, predestined us to adoptions as sons through Jesus Christ to himself according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. God chose to save his people through the cross of Jesus Christ so that when our hearts burst with love and affection for the Father's demonstration of his love by Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, he would be honored. Our delight and worship in the cross brings glory to God. He is honored by his people as Redeemer and Savior. Therefore, if God being honored, being made much of, is us delighting in him, when we pray that God's name be hallowed, we are asking that God's beauty and attributes, mostly and namely through the cross, are praised by many. When we embrace this truth, that God's glory be our desire for the day, we can then confidently and wholeheartedly come to pray the next two clauses. Thy kingdom come. That's kind of broad, thy kingdom come. What, is, what does this mean when we ask that his kingdom come? Well, since the beginning of Christ's ministry, he has proclaimed the kingdom of heaven is at hand, that it was coming, that it was now. And in the 13th chapter of Matthew, Jesus does several parables of the kingdom of heaven. Each parable has the idea of planting and gathering at the proper time. When Christ came declaring the kingdom of heaven, he was calling for the time of planting, of evangelism. In Matthew 13, 41, we see the gathering shall come at the time uh, of when Christ returns. And Christ is proclaiming that the Messiah has come and hope to the nations has come. Therefore, when we pray that God's kingdom come, we are answering back to God, yes, Lord Jesus, come. May your gospel be preached. May the orphans and the widows be fed. Jesus, would you be at the center of our heart's delight? When we pray that God's name be glorified by the preaching of the gospel, and the salvation of others, we are participating with God in his mission. His will now becomes our will. Thy will be done. Now this is where it can get tricky because when we pray that God's kingdom come and, and his will be done, that, what, what is God's will for our lives out? My, our gener my generation often finds that question to be a, amongst the bigger ones of what is God's will for my life? And, and he's told us clearly in scripture to preach the gospel, to, to make sure that the orphan and the widow is fed. So when it comes to that, those sort of things for the kingdom, is it personal for us? That's the question we need to ask. And you say, of course it's personal. That's why I'm praying it as I'm here in my room. You know, may your gospel come. May, may the orphan and the widow be fed. But do we realize the cost that comes with God's will being done? When we pray that the gospel be preached and the widow and the orphan be fed, who is supposed to do that? Is it not the church? If we want to see God's kingdom come, there will be sacrifices that we must make. And Jesus is our greatest example of this. He is our model for the advancing of the kingdom. While in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus knew what was coming, and he did not want it. He knew he had to take on the weight of sin, and it grieved him to the point that he sweat blood. Under all that pressure, under all that circumstance of the Holy Son of God having to come in contact with sin, he was able to say, not my will be done, but yours. A life following Christ will cost us everything. But I pray that we can look at sacrifice in the face and say, not my will, but yours. And it's not as gloomy as it, as it might seem. When, when we read Hebrews 12, we kind of get a glimpse into the mind or the other thoughts of Christ as he was praying these things. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus knew the sacrifice. He knew the shame that would come with the cross. But what enabled him to look past and disregard it was the joy that was set before him. Namely, being seated at the right hand of the Father, surrounded by his saints who are in his image and sing his praises. 
So may we follow our model, our elder brother. Jesus Christ was our model. He had the spirit. We have the spirit. We know what it looks like to depend on the Father and to be led by his spirit. Like the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, when he talks about suffering for the sake of the gospel, he says, therefore, we do not lose heart in sharing the gospel, but though our outer man is decaying, our inner man is being renewed day by day for momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. When we come to delight primarily in God, we can pray that his kingdom come. We can sacrifice that his will be done. And the apostle Paul, with him, we won't lose heart as we anticipate the glory that is to be seen. Paul was beaten, scourged, stoned. But these, he counted all these things momentary and light when he disregarded the cross, dis, or, sorry, disregarded the shame and took up his cross, focusing on the joy that was set before him. God is on mission to make his name great, to be glorified by our hearts, fullest delight in him. And this can be a daunting task, but we are not alone in this. The, the next three clauses, they show us that God desires to help us with all we need to live freely and boldly for Christ. But that could be a sermon for another day. <laughs> My friends, we don't deserve this. For we were once enemies of God, and we deserved everything that Jesus took. But by the cross, Jesus Christ has forgiven us. And now this Son of Man, who loved us so dearly to give his life, has risen, and with an indescribable love for us, he extends his hand and says, follow me. So will we follow him? So my, my hope is that you guys would take this prayer home, and, and just as it has been so beneficial for me, and keeping my, my mind goal-oriented, task-oriented as I was there, not, not just going to have fun. And the, the park was right there. I could have gone and snowboarded for, for days. Literally, I could have camped out there for the weekend. But I knew that my time there was not for my own self. That it was for God. And so take this prayer home and think through and, and pray through each clause and, and think about it and, and may the word of God expound each, each thing and what, and what we're praying for. Today we have seen that the Lord's Prayer is a simple prayer and that it causes us to forsake the world and to center our hearts around the glory of God. Let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you again that before the beginning of the world you had it planned for your son to die on the cross so that for those who would come to him who would repent and believe would be saved. And now, oh God, we follow the one commandment that you gave your people in Israel to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Lord, it, these things, they, they completely go against what we believe, what the world teaches us of, of living for yourself, of, of, of joy being not found in a person, but in material things. God, so I pray that, that during this week, Lord, that we would pray always, for new desires, for a greater desire for you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rick.